I recently posted on Reddit asking about epic airports that you might not have heard of before. Now, I can't cover all of them, but here are some that stood out. First up is Mackinac Island in Michigan. Now, you really have to fight your temptation here to call it Mackinac because it is not pronounced Mackinac. You'll sound like a tourist, even though I am a tourist. Part of what makes this island cool is that the website says that transportation on the island is limited to bicycle, horse carriage, you read that right, and foot traffic as motor vehicles are banned. They give a taxi number and then evidently when you call the taxi, a horse carriage shows up about 20 minutes later and it's $9 a person with a two fare minimum, so bring cash. You can also rent bikes in town, but it's about two miles away, so you're probably gonna have to ride the horse carriage, but Honestly, that sounds pretty awesome in the first place. And then you can stay at the Grand Hotel there. Um, it was started in 1887, it just looks pretty cool. And one Reddit user says you gotta have the buffet there. And then evidently there are many bread and breakfasts on the island that are worth staying at too. Now it's also worth mentioning that there is no fuel or FBO on the field, but five miles away is Mackinac County and they do have fuel. So if you wanna say that you flew to a private island and stayed the night there, Mackinac is for you. Also, if you've been to any of these places, I would love to hear it down in the comments. Give us your first hand take. Is it awesome? Is it not? What are the cool things to do there? I want your perspective. Next up is Sulphur Creek Ranch in Idaho. Now I have been there personally. I can vouch that this is one of the coolest airstrips that I've ever been into. And it's also the best breakfast I've ever gotten. The only way in and the only way out is either by airplane, horseback or by foot. And so you are in the middle of absolute nowhere. They have some cabins you can rent and stay there. And then they have kind of a main lodge that, that they also cook out of. And so when you go there, they don't have like a restaurant menu. You just tell them how many people are going to be eating and they serve you what they made based on on the supplies that they flew in that week in a 206. So it is just an absolutely spectacular approach. It's got a little gravel runway there and it is it is just magnificent. Next up is Bar 10 Ranch in Arizona, right by the Grand Canyon. It's a 4,500 foot airstrip and then they have lodging options right there at the ranch, including bunk rooms. And then they also have literal covered wagons that they've turned into sort of rooms. It's kind of glamping because they have full-size beds in these oversized wagons. It's really, really cool. You should check out the website. The ranch also provides three meals a day if you want, and then they also offer different ranch activities like skeet shooting, ATV tours of the rim of the Grand Canyon, river rafting, that sort of thing. Now, if you're not looking to stay overnight but just want to stop by, there's a Reddit user that says if you can coordinate ahead of time, they'll pick you up an ATV for a barbecue-style picnic lunch at the lodge. Sounds pretty awesome. Next up is Gaston's White River Resort in Northern Arkansas. This place has become a really, really special place to me. I go there several times a year. They've got a 3,000 plus foot airstrip that's really well maintained. Uh, it's right there on the river. And then all along the river, they have dozens and dozens of cabins that you can rent. And then they have an awesome restaurant that's right on the water. It's actually part of it's over the water. So it's really, really cool views, a pretty kind of eclectic place. When you go in there, it's kind of a museum of sorts. They have all different kinds of boat engines hanging from the ceilings and stuff. It's it's really, really cool. But probably the coolest part is the trout fishing that you can do there. It's like world-class trout fishing. They leave right there from the resort. It's not really even that expensive. They'll pick you up in the morning, you go fish the river, and then you can take your catch to the restaurant and they'll fry it up for you that night at the restaurant. And so it's just a really, really cool experience and you can fly in there. You don't have to rent a car or anything like that. It's really accessible. The scenery is absolutely gorgeous um, and the fishing is quite spectacular. So check out Gaston if you haven't already. Next up and not too far away from Gaston's in Northern Arkansas is a place called Trigger Gap. And this is maintained by the Recreational Aviation Foundation or the RAF. And it's a really, really cool airstrip up on a plateau. They have a nice Gazebo is not the right word. There's probably a different word I'm looking for that I'll put on screen here that I can't think of right now. Uh, but it's an awesome lookout point. You can go in there, they have a composting toilet, and then you can also camp out there. The cool thing and maybe lesser known about Trigger Gap is that you can actually call the outfitters there. It's on the Kings River and there's Kings River Outfitters and Trigger Gap Outfitters, I think it's called. I usually called Kings River Outfitters, not for any particular reason, they're just the first one I called. And they'll actually pick you up from Trigger Gap. You give them a notice ahead of time, tell them you're coming and you wanna float the river and do some fishing. They'll come pick you up, you float the river, do some fishing, and then they'll take you back to the airport and you camp under the wing of your plane, make a campfire that night. It's just awesome and it's in really good condition. The approach is, is pretty easy and it's really, really scenic. So um, this strip, I think the RAF has just done a really, really nice job with it and is worth visiting. Next is Copala state on the sand of the Washington coast. Pretty sure it's pronounced Capalis. If I'm wrong, leave me a comment. Be nice, but let me know. It's a sand runway and they have some orange markers indicating the runway start and end, but I've never seen something this rugged also be like a formally charted runway. It's funny when they're like, oh yeah, here's the runway. And you see a picture and you're like, 
That is just the beach, but evidently it is the runway. Their website says the Copalis Airport is the only known beach airport in Washington state where aircraft landing is legal. It also says that the landing area is basically between the river and the rocks on the other end, but that erosion has reduced the 4,500 foot runway by about 1,100 feet or more. And so check for updates on runway length. And then it gets even more interesting with the latest NOTAM. It says large fin whale has washed up on the beach within airport limits. Winter king tides may reposition carcass and block runway area access. We're also aware that a cabin has fallen onto the beach area due to erosion from the shifting Capalis River. We're working with contacts at the Washington State Parks and Recreation to discuss options. I have never seen a NOTAM talking about the options for repositioning a dead whale carcass on the runway that is also shifting due to the river. <laughs> I love it. I also love some of the disclaimers on the site. Check local tide tables. Look for dark, wet sand at low tide. Avoid operating in the razor clam beds. <laughs> Do not park aircraft overnight due to tidal changes. I mean, you are landing in the middle of the Hunger Games. I mean, this is what I love about aviation. You're just flying cool places and experiencing really unique things. Next up is Cedar Mills, which is on the border of Texas and Oklahoma on Lake Texoma, hence the name. Now I grew up going to this lake. I've got a lot of memories there. Cedar Mills is awesome. I did a whole separate video talking about the approach there because it's really cool. So if you're landing to the west, you get to fly in right above the water and the runway starts like literally on the water's edge. And so the approach is just really scenic. And then usually you're taking off over the water too. So the, the departure just looks really beautiful, especially at sunrise or sunset. Uh, they have a lot of cabins there that you can rent either on the, the runway itself or uh, on the on the marina side. And then they have a restaurant there uh, that's pretty good. It flooded several times over the years, so they kept backing it up and making it taller. And the one, the current version that they have has, has been there for a couple decades now. Uh, they also have a, a, a petting zoo there, which is really random. But there's a lot to be said about Cedar Mills. It's a beautiful approach. The food's good. You can stay there. And then they also have guided uh, striped bass fishing or striper fishing. They're leaving right out of the marina. Charlie Stringer, if you ever go, uh, he's he's one of the guys to get. He's awesome. And it's just a, it's a really great experience, really cool place to take your airplane. Next up is Johnson Creek in Idaho. Now, this is probably one of the most iconic backcountry strips there is in the whole country. So you might already know about this one, but I had to include it in this list. It's a 3,400 foot well-maintained grass airstrip that sits at about 5,000 feet. And the mountains around it are quite higher than that. You can camp there, you can fish there, you can grab a courtesy van to drive to a restaurant and so much more. This should be on every pilot's bucket list. And if you're going to Johnson Creek, you might as well also stop by Big Creek, also in Idaho. This has probably one of the most scenic approaches you can possibly imagine. And it's also not very intimidating. There aren't, I mean, you, there's mountains, so there's obstacles, but you have a really, really long approach into final there. So I found the approach really approachable, <laughs> if you will, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. And then once you're there, you can either stay there at the lodge, they have a restaurant there, you can, you can eat there, you can hike, bike, fish, and just do cool Idaho stuff there. It is absolutely worth going to. Now here are a couple honorable mentions just for interesting things that stood out about these airports. First up is Cedar Key, Florida, which their website says is the shortest paved public runway in Florida. It's only 2,300 feet long, but there's displaced thresholds on both ends with water on both ends. So it's a really good opportunity to practice real world short field while also still being on pavement and at sea level. My favorite comment from a Reddit user here is that there used to be a little old lady that would monitor CTAF with a transceiver and ask if you wanted transportation. Then she'd come pick you up at the airport in her old beater and drive you at six miles per hour into town to go get some food. One of us needs to go there and test to see if the little old lady is still there. Please do that and report back. Let me know. Or if you are the little old lady, please let me know. That would be a lot easier. That was kind of weird. All right, moving on. And we also have Beaumont Hotel in Kansas. And what I thought was interesting about this one is that it's a, a grass strip and then evidently you taxi onto a road, like a, a working road, <laughs> and go to the stop sign in your plane and then stop and eat at the hotel. Now, I thought this, this couldn't be correct. I've never taxied on a road. But then I looked at the airport diagram and it does show the taxiway of about 1,200 feet by 20 feet wide going to the restaurant. And it kind of coincides with what Google Maps look like. So. I guess that's right. I guess you do actually go taxi on the road and that's pretty cool. And then the diner looked good as well and I'm a sucker for a good diner. So I'd love to know what other airports do you want to see added to this list? Please leave me a comment and let me know and I could see this turning into a series of just documenting some of the coolest airports to go to. So if I do make a part two, that video will be on the screen right now. But in the meantime, there's another video on the screen that I think you might enjoy. So I'll see you there.